<clears throat> Hello everyone, I'm Loren Malloy, and today I'm going to read to you Grimm's Fairy Tales. Yes, that's right, Grimm's Fairy Tales, part one. I wonder how many of you have actually read and heard these stories. Grimm's Fairy Tales by Brothers Grimm. In the comment section, please, if you have read one of these stories, let me know which one is your favorite while I delicately page through. Let's see. Which one shall we read first? Let's start at the beginning. <laughs> the Twelve Dancing Princesses. The Twelve Dancing Princesses by Brothers Grimm. There once was a king who had twelve daughters, each more beautiful than the other. They slept together in a hall where their beds stood close to one another. And at night, when they had all gone to bed, the king locked the door and bolted it. But when he unlocked it in the morning, he noticed that their shoes had been danced to pieces and nobody could explain how it happened. So the king sent out a proclamation saying that anyone could discover where the princesses did their night's dancing should choose one of them to be his wife and should reign after his death. But whoever presented himself and failed to make the discovery after three days and nights was to forfeit his life. Mm. A prince soon presented himself and offered to take the risk. He was well received and at night was taken into a room adjoining the hall where the princesses slept. His bed was made up there and he was to watch and see where they went to dance so that they could not do anything or go anywhere. The door of his room was left open too. But the eyes of the king's son grew heavy and he fell asleep. When he woke up in the morning, all the 12 had been dancing for the soles of their shoes were full of holes. The second and third evenings passed with the same results. And then the prince found no mercy and his head was cut off. Many others came after him and offered to take the risk, but they all had to lose their lives. I remember this as a really cute little children's story uh, I don't know if anybody actually read that book either. It was very pretty illustrated, but this is a much darker version. Now it happened that a poor soldier who had been wounded and could no longer serve found himself on the road to the town where the king lived. There he fell in with an old woman who asked him where he intended to go. I really don't know myself, he said and added in fun, I should like to discover where the king's daughters dance their shoes into holes and after that become king. That is not so difficult, said the old woman. You must not drink the wine which will be brought to you in the evening, but must pretend to be fast asleep. Whereupon she gave him a short cloak saying, when you wear this, you will be invincible. And then you can slip out after the 12 princesses. As soon as the soldier heard this good advice, he took it seriously, plucked up the courage, appeared before the king and offered himself as a suitor. He was as well received as the others and was dressed in royal garments. In the evening, when bedtime came, he was conducted to the ante room. As he was about to go to bed, the eldest princess appeared, bringing him a cup of wine. But 
he had fastened a sponge under his chin and let the wine run down into it so that he did not drink one drop. Then he laid down, and when he had been quiet, a little while he began to snore, as though in the deepest of sleep. The twelve princesses heard him and laughed. <laughs> the eldest said, he too must forfeit his life. Then they got up, opened cupboards, chests, cases, and brought out their most beautiful dresses. They decked themselves before the glass, skipping about and reveling in the prospect of the dance. Only the youngest sister said, I don't know what it is. You may rejoice, but I... feel so strange. A misfortune is certainly hanging over us. Here's the picture. You are a little goose, answered the eldest. You're always so frightened. Have you forgotten how many princes have come in here in vain? Why, I need not have given the soldier a sleep draught at all. The blockhead would never have wakened. When they were all ready, they looked at the soldier. But his eyes were shut and he did not stir. So they thought they would soon be quite safe. Then the eldest went up to one of their beds and knocked on it. It sank into the earth and they descended through the opening one after another, the eldest first. The soldier who had noticed everything did not hesitate long, but threw on his cloak and went down behind the youngest. Halfway down, he trod on her dress. She was frightened and she said, what was that? Who's holding on to my dress? Don't be foolish. It must have caught on to a, a snail or a nail, said the eldest. Then they went right down, and when they got quite underground, they all stood in a marvelous, beautiful avenue of trees. All the leaves were silver and glittering and shone. The soldier thought, I must take some token with me. And as he broke off a twig, a sharp crack came from the tree. The youngest cried out, all is not well. Did you hear that sound? Those are triumphal salutes because we shall soon have released our princesses, said the eldest. Next, they came to an avenue where all the leaves were gold and at last into a third where they were of shining diamonds. From both these, he broke off a twig and there was a crack each time, which made the youngest princess start with terror. But the eldest maintained that the sounds were only triumphal salutes. They went on faster and came to a great lake. Close to the bank lay 12 little boats and in every boat sat a handsome prince. They had expected the 12 princesses at each took one with him. But the soldier seated himself by the youngest. Then said the prince, I don't know why, but the boat is much heavier today and I'm obliged to row with all my strength to get it along. I wonder why that is, said the youngest, unless perhaps it is the hot weather. It is strangely hot. On the opposite side of the lake stood a splendid, brightly lit castle from which came the sounds of the joyous music of trumpets and drums. They rode across and every prince danced with his love and the soldier danced too unseen. If one of the princesses held a cup of wine, he drank out of it so that it was empty when she lifted it to her lips. This frightened the youngest one but the eldest always silenced her. They danced until three in the morning when their shoes were danced into holes. 
and they were obliged to stop. The princes took them back across the lake, and this time the soldier took his seat beside the eldest. On the bank, they said farewell to their princes and promised to come again the next night. When they got to the steps, the soldier ran on ahead, lay down in bed, and when the twelve came laggering by, slowly and wearily, he began to snore again very loudly, so that they said, we are quite safe as far as he's concerned. Then they took off their beautiful dresses, put them away, placed the worn out shoes under their beds and laid down. The next morning, the soldier determined to say nothing, but to see the wonderful doings again. So he went with them a second and third night. Everything was just the same as the first time. And they danced each time until their shoes were in holes. But the third time, the soldier took away a wine cup as a token. When the appointed hour came for his answer, he took the three twigs and the cup with him and went before the king. The 12 princesses stood behind the door listening to hear what he would say. The, when the king put the question, where did my daughters dance their shoes to pieces in the night? He answered, with 12 princesses, with 12 princes in an underground castle. He then produced the tokens. The king sent for his daughters and asked them whether the soldier had spoken the truth, as they saw that they were betrayed and would gain nothing by their lies. They were obliged to admit it all. Thereupon the king asked the soldier which one he ch would choose as his wife. He answered, I am no, young, no longer young. Give me the eldest. So the wedding was celebrated that very day and the kingdom was promised to him on the king's death. But for every night which the princes had spent in dancing with the princesses, a day was added to their time of enchantment. That is Grimm's fairy tales version, the Brothers Grimm of the 12 dancing princesses. That's literally how it ends. What'd you guys think? Did you ever hear that version before? Let me know in the comments if you liked it, if you've heard that version before, if you ever seen the illustration that Grimm had in the book. Grimm's Fairy Tales, The Twelve Dancing Princesses by Brothers Grimm, read by me, Loren Malloy. Now make sure you tune in because I'll be reading more stories from Grimm's Fairy Tales for you. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and happy horrors.